From small villages in sub-Saharan Africa to the bustling cities of the Asian subcontinent, from Latin America to China and Eastern Europe, people everywhere are striving to improve their lives. People seeking the same things, opportunity to learn, an identity and ownership that allows them to prosper, a chance to earn a living for themselves and their families, to use their imaginations, to take risks and possibly fail, but to increase their options and to reap the rewards if they succeed. Join us now to see what can happen when ordinary people have the tools to help themselves. Major funding for this program has been provided by the Barney Family Foundation and the Green Children Foundation. Somewhere on Earth, at this very moment, a child is beginning its journey through life. 250 babies are born every minute, 15,000 an hour, 132 million a year, each and every year. And among them may be the potential to cure disease, to reinvent the future, or to change the course of world history, because people are the world's ultimate resource. Carved from the Asian subcontinent after a bloody civil war with Pakistan, this predominantly Muslim nation is the most densely populated on Earth, and half of its 140 million citizens are under the age of 20. Constantly threatened by monsoons and flooding, Bangladesh could hardly grow enough food to feed itself for its first 30 years. Today, the capital of Dhaka is a teeming city where commerce is a way of life. When Bangladesh won independence in 1971, more than 70% of its people lived on less than one dollar a day. Hunger and famine haunted almost every village and every family. It was into this world that Minera Begum and Din Islam Hussein were born. When they were only 13, Minera and Din Islam were married in an arranged ceremony. Din Islam had grown up in a village of weavers and had learned the trade. But although he worked hard for others, he could never get ahead himself. Poverty is uh, a, a kind of a darkness around you. You don't see any hope, any ray of hope. Uh, you live every day the same way in the darkness. Uh, you don't have a future. In the early 70s, a young Muhammad Yunus, then an economics professor, left the city to do research in local villages like this one. Here I am teaching elegant theories of economics in the classroom and people are dying uh, outside the classroom and we have nothing to do about it. He found people making many beautiful products, yet they remained desperately poor. To an economist, it didn't make sense. Something was missing. But if you look around, who are the people really working? It's the poor. They work their pants off. Professor Yunus realized that the only way the villagers could buy supplies to create small businesses was with high interest loans from unscrupulous money lenders, 
There was no other option. And money lenders were imposing very terrible conditionalities on them. Like you have to sell your product to me at the price that I decide, etc. that kind of thing. In one village, Muhammad Yunus found that he could provide life-changing loans to 42 people. They would cost a total of $27, an average of 64 cents each. He personally made the loans. And I was shocked. Here we talk about millions of dollars and billions of dollars of development assistance to help the economy grow and so on. We never paid any attention to people who needed such a small amount of money. That was the beginning of an idea that grew into the Grameen Bank, a bank for the rural poor. In the language of Bangladesh, Grameen means rural. It's also the idea for which Mohammed Yunus and the Grameen Bank were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006. The business of the Grameen Bank is microcredit, small loans to poor people, enabling them to create businesses of their own. We have a very strange financial system in the world. More than two-thirds of the world population are rejected by the financial system. So it's a system which is limited to very privileged people. Like everyone in their village, Minera and Denislam were far from privileged. They watched as their neighbors prospered from the Grameen bank loans. Finally, they decided to take the risk themselves. The system is unusual and simple. A loan requires no collateral, no legal contract, and 96% of the loans in this mostly Muslim country are made to women. Well, giving loans to women in Bangladesh is not easy. Somehow the religion is interpreted uh, here as women should stay home. So when we tried to give loans to women, a husband became the first uh, opponent of that loan. In time, things changed. Money that went to the family through women brought so much benefit to the families. Women were very cautious with their money. When they start earning income, the children become the first beneficiary of that income. And women had a longer vision. They wanted to build up to something. Men always wanted to enjoy themselves right away rather than uh, wait for future and so on. With Minera's loan from the Grameen Bank, she and Dinislam bought a loom. Dinislam taught Minera to weave, and they began to create jamdanis, handcrafted traditional saris. It's a difficult business because the competition is fierce, the work is exacting and rigorous. It takes a week to make each sari. But the system is designed to work. Each week, the Grameen borrowers gather in a center meeting to pay their installments directly to a regional Grameen banker and to discuss their common problems. Center meeting brings people together. For them, it's a one opportunity to get to know their neighbors and interact with them. It's a social activity for them. Uh, some people say it's uh, as important as the loan itself. Uh, they never had so many friends before. Now they have friends. Key elements of the system are peer pressure and individual pride. Initial loans are always for income-producing projects, so there will be money for repayment loans are made for livestock, poultry, and agriculture, but also for grocery shops, even though traditional Muslim society discourages the participation of women in the marketplace. Loans are even given for cell phones. There are now more than 250,000 Grameen phone ladies throughout Bangladesh. They provide a phone for the village, selling minutes that enable millions to talk with loved ones across the country and around the world. As part of the loan process, borrowers throughout Bangladesh have developed what they call the 16 decisions, crucial elements for living successful, healthy lives. They recite them at every center meeting. They include cleanliness, balanced meals, family planning, and working hard. Loans is, is an excuse, really. They work around that loan 
and discover themselves and their creativity comes out. It's a really this creativity in the person who changes the life. A second loan helped Minera and Dinislam improve their home. It now has a tin roof to keep out the monsoon rains, a separate room for the loom, and a well that provides clean water. As tradition here dictates, the men of the family still eat first, but other things are changing. <laughs> Women having access to uh, finance, access to money, uh, changes everything because now she has the power of money. The Grameen Bank operates in nearly every one of the more than 70,000 rural villages in Bangladesh. There are more than six and a half million borrowers. The loans are still small. The average is only $85, and the payback rate is 99%. In our last count, we see that 56% of the families within Grameen Bank have moved out of poverty. Each week, Dinislam carries Jamdani saris to the Demra market, where hundreds of products sell to the highest bidders. It's the first stop for goods that will travel to the capital of Dhaka Very good, Jamdani. and around the world. Like millions of others, Minera and Dinislam are now making decisions for themselves. They decide what to make, where to sell, and how much to charge. The future of Bangladesh is bright. Uh, we are hoping that very soon we'll be able to become a poverty-free country. And this hopefully will inspire the whole world to become a poverty-free world. The power of a simple idea has changed lives in Bangladesh. And microcredit has become a global phenomenon. <laughs> Thank you.